Cloaks are awesome and make your heroes look fantastic. And in this video, we're going to show you three ways of painting them that can be applied to any of your hero miniatures you might want to paint. Now, if you're new to this channel, be sure to like this video and subscribe to it too, and leave a comment below telling us your favorite dramatic hero. But if you'll excuse me, I also have something dramatic to do. The first method of painting cloaks we're going to take a look at is how to dry brush them, which is a great thing to do if you're speed painting your army because this is very quick and easy to do. It's also ideal if you're new to the hobby because the techniques required to do this are actually pretty easy to master. Now it does require some specific brushes for the way that we're going to do it here to ensure nice smooth gradients on the fabric, but we'll come to that later. The first thing we need to do is get things going. So our example miniature is going to be a Stormcast Eternal, who we've chosen because the cloak is massive. And what we want to do is paint this cloak red. Now you can use this technique that we're going to show you here for any color cloak on any miniature you might want to do but the first thing to do is to pick a dark shade of your chosen color so as we're going for red here what we need to do is start out with a dark red which means we're going to start out with some berserker red now what we need to do is apply it evenly across the entire cloak so for that reason i picked out a large brush because the cloak is massive on our example here so what i've got is a medium shade brush from citadel and for the base coat all we've got to do is as ever just thin the paint down and then start blocking this detail in now, as you're going to see, because we're going to be using some dry brushing here, as we do that, it is going to get a little bit messy. So just bear in mind, if you are doing this technique on your miniatures, you want to do this stage very early on in the painting process so you can eat up as you do further details. But for the first step with base coating, it's very simple. Just find your fabric and then just block it in entirely with this color. So what we want to do is paint it over this, over this gray undercoat, which I've started with. This undercoat actually is standard gray from the Color Forge, and it's just a matter of getting an even finish on the base coat. So apply this coat, let it dry completely, and then go for a second coat once I've first one is completely dry. Once you have that even base coat built up, the next thing we're going to do is start the dry brushing process. And remember I mentioned this is going to be a little bit different from how we normally dry brush. That involves some quite specific materials. What we need to do now is get those materials together. And the first of those is the correct kind of brush. So the sort of dry brush I'm going to be using for this is one of these sorts of dry brushes. And this is one from Artis Opus. You can see it's quite distinct in that it's got this almost bulb-like shape to the bristles and they're very soft and springy as well. You can get them from different companies. So for example, I've got one from the Army Painter just here because it's very, very similar in style. It's got the same sort of appearance the bristles and they're quite distinctly different from a regular dry brush that we tend to use which has a much more of a chisel point to it so you can see it's quite different and it's important because the application we're going to be using here involves some stippling which is why we need that sponginess to it so it is important to use a brush like this now the second thing to make sure you've got ready is a little bit of sponge because this sort of dry brushing involves keeping the brush a little bit damp because you don't want it to dry out and start leaving a sort of scratchy appearance to it we want it to keep quite soft so we start to build those smooth gradients on it so sponge is what you need that's what i've got here now this particular one actually came in a set with the Art Opus brushes. Basically what it is is a bit of sponge and some glass, but you can quite easily make something like this by just getting a piece of sponge and putting it on a tray or something like that. What we need to do with this is just get it slightly damp so we can use it to re-moisten the brush a little bit, but not too much so it doesn't go over the top. So what we want to do is just get a little bit of water in there that we can draw from as we go along. So to do this, what you should do is just dip the back of your brush into some water just to get some on there and then just drop it into the middle of your sponge. So just get a little bit there like that, a tiny bit more. And then we just need to work that into the sponge. So you just need your finger for this. All you gotta do is just start pushing it in and dabbing it around and really working that in there. Now, ideally what should happen is that when you touch this sponge, it should just feel just damp to the touch. So not really soaking wet or anything like that. Bear in mind what happens to your finger when you just tap it on here is what's gonna to happen to the brush. And we mustn't overdo it. We just wanna basically reactivate the paint rather than soak it. So once you've got that just tapped in there, just touch it. If it feels slightly damp to the touch, then you're ready to go. And you can see there's just a little bit of water there on my finger. Just gonna work it in a tiny bit more. That's a little bit better, so I'm happy with that. So with that prepared, we can now start dry brushing. To get the dry brush set up, what you'll need is some sort of surface to work into. What you want is something that's not gonna take away all the moisture from the brush. So for that reason, what I have here is some cardboard that's got a laminated surface to it, but just anything like this will do just fine. You could, for example, just cut the front of the box off whatever miniatures you're painting and just use that. So that's the sort of thing we wanna go for. Then you need your color of choice. In this case, I'm using some Sanguine Scarlet, and what we need to do is first of all, just dampen the brush ever so slightly. Let's get a little bit of this on the tip of the brush, like a regular dry brush, and then start working it into the bristles and removing the excess. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm actually twisting the brush. So what I'm doing here is making sure there's no lumps of paint or anything like that in any particular angle, because we don't want to miss one by accident and then have too much apply at once on the miniature. So I want to bring it down to about this sort of point here. I'm going to dampen it ever so slightly. 
and then we're ready to start applying it to the miniature. Now ideally, the first pass on this should be quite subtle, and so we can build it up this way. And what we're looking for are the parts of the fabric that stand out more. So it's areas like here, for example, we're gonna start out with more of that stippling motion. And so what I'm gonna do is start dotting it on like this, and you can see, again, as I'm doing it, I'm rotating the brush to make sure we get the most use out of all the water and paint that we got in the brush. But basically, you just go along there like that, looking for other raised areas such as just here and getting that as well. Now, there are some parts where it's a little bit sharper, and these areas, what you can do is a bit more of a classic dry brush application. Again, twisting the brush as you go along to get that bit in the middle. But you can see the first coat is quite subtle, but it also dries pretty quickly, which means we can go back in for a second one, start building it up. And basically, what you do is just keep working away at it like this until you get that nice, strong red coming through. I finished building up that first coat now, and you can see it's given us those nice smooth highlights. And you can see here, because we've been keeping the brush ever so slightly moist, that's allowed us to get that smooth gradient here, which is really important. So this is why when you're doing this, you can't use tissue or anything like that to set up the dry brush, or even just some regular cardboard. It has to be something like laminated cardboard or something that's just not gonna take away all that water, otherwise it's not gonna quite work out in this way. But what we now need to do is start going a little bit lighter, so it's time to go to a brighter red. I'm now gonna add in some demon red, and you can see in getting this ready, I've not washed my brush, because because I want to keep that nice balance point where it's a little bit damp, but not too much. So just go straight into your next color. Now, because there is some of that previous red still on here, it means what's gonna happen is the two are going to mix. So the first application here is actually gonna be a little bit of a mix of the two. And so that's good because what it's gonna help do is really build up that nice gradient that we're looking for to get those smooth folds in the fabric there. And as we go further and further with Demon Red, it's gradually gonna take over, and this way we're gonna get that highlight showing through. But just like before, we gotta set up, making sure we're rotating the brush to really make sure we remove that paint from all those angles. And once you're ready, we can then start applying it. Beginning once again with that stippling motion, now just coordinating a little bit more towards these top parts. So just focusing a little bit more towards areas where the light's gonna catch. Again, just softly applying it, turning the brush as you go along, not rushing it as you do it so you get that smooth gradient. Same on this part here too. And then once you've got those areas, be sure to get the sharper folds by just flicking it in the more traditional way to make sure you get those parts as well. And here we have the miniature with that next red applied and you can see now things are getting much brighter so it's time to take it even further and now we're going to go into an orange. So in this case what I'm going to use is some orange flare and we're going to be applying it in the same sort of way. Again using that soft dry brushing application to slowly build up that colour and so what we want to do is first of all just make sure the brush is still damp. Again I've not washed it at all, got my orange just here, what I'm going to do is just pick up some of that and then get it in the brush in the same way. Just turning the brush to make sure we work it into the bristles from all those angles. Now orange is generally quite a weak colour so we've just got to bear that in mind as we apply it and you can see very quickly I'm starting to lose that colour there on the brush but it's still a little bit damp so that's ideal because now it's going to softly blend into the colours beneath it and so what we need to do is just work at the miniature just slowly building this one up once again. So like before we're looking for the more raised up parts but being a little bit more selective now. So on this crease for example I want to make sure we just start around about this sort of distance here and then again just gradually build it up just working it onto the miniature and really going at it because as I say orange does tend to be quite weak so we need to make sure we really start steadily build that up. Now just like before what we also want to do is start doing that flicking towards the edges of things. So when we've got those sharper creases there we just want to go back and forth like this. Again just turn the brush as we go along. Same with these creases just here and also at this stage we want to make sure we get the outer hem as well. So just gradually build that up in areas like that as well. Now the orange is applied, you can see we've got a really lovely contrast and also gradient between those colours. And so what we can now do is just take it a bit further because remember each colour we've been applying is mixing with what we had previously, which means that what we may get up to that orange there, it's not jumping out quite so much as the final stage. So what we can do is push it further than we normally would with the highlight because it's gonna get reduced because of the mixing process on the brush itself. So what we're gonna do is go onto a yellow for the final highlight. And what I've got is some yellow flame for this. What we want to do is just get a small amount of this on the brush, just little bits there on the bristles, just like before and in the same way just work it into the brush whilst also making sure every now and then we get it nice and damp so that it's not going to be too dry on the miniature. You can see as I'm mixing it on the palette already how it's actually going more towards an orange so that's really what we're going to get on the miniature. Ideal for our purposes just here and when you have it really light there on that cardboard what we can do is start applying it and this time it's going to be that flicking motion all over. So just very gently on sharper parts that stand out so we get that nice bright highlight to finish this off.
I finished with that yellow and here we have the completed cloak. And you can see by applying the paint like this, we've really been able to bring out all those folds in the fabric. And best of all, doing this was really quick and really easy. But there are some key things about this particular technique that you need to be aware of. And that is the tools that we used first of all. So that particular sort of brush and also that little bit of sponge and also making sure that what you're preparing the paint on isn't just gonna soak away all that moisture because you need a little bit of it just to avoid it going dry and scratchy. Now, of course we use red here, but this method can work with any sort of color. Just remember as you get towards those final highlights, you can afford to go quite extreme with the colors that you pick because they are gonna mix with the colors you've got on the brush and tone things down. So just bear that in mind as you get to your final highlights. The next method we're gonna take a look at is one that in my mind I think of as being the classic method because this is something I've been doing for years and years and back when I used to work at Games Workshop in the hobby team, it's what we consider to be the standard way of painting this sort of thing for tabletop armies. And essentially this is that classic method where you base coat it and then use some wash to shade things down, then layer things to neaten things up and then go on to highlights after that. So kind of a four stage method here, but there are some particulars you've got to be aware of when doing cloaks, especially when you have those ones with the big sweeping shapes on them like our Stormcast have got. So to do this, what we need to do is start out with that base coat. And what you should do is pick out what you want the mid-tone to be for this. So basically the color is gonna be if you just have the cloak on a flat surface. In our case, we're going for red again. So what I'm gonna use is some Sanguine Scarlet for this. And to apply it, I'm still going to use that large brush here, that medium shade brush from Citadel, because again, we're using a Stormcast for our example. It's a massive cloak here, so we want a nice large brush to base coat this. So as ever, make sure the paint's nicely thinned down on your palette, and then it's time to start blocking it in. Just make sure it's got that nice, smooth consistency there. And when you're ready, it's just a matter of painting the entire thing. And as before, what we need to do is apply a thin coat over the whole surface, let it dry, and then apply a second thin coat on the top to make sure it's got a nice strong finish. Once you've finished building up your smooth base coat, you're then ready to apply some shading on there. So now it's time to use the wash. And the curl of wash here is really largely up to you, depending on what sort of thing you wanna go for. So for example, what you could do is pick the same sort of color as what you've put in there as the mid-tone. So for example, if you've gone for a blue glow, you could go for a dark blue wash. This way you can get a nice rich color. But for this example, what I want is quite a strong contrast between the shadows and the light areas. So in this case, I'm gonna go for a black wash. Whatever the case, just make sure it's a really dark color. But for our example, I'm using Oblivion Black Wash. And to apply it, I'm going for the large brush again back to that medium shade brush here and what we want to do is just load up a generous amount on the brush and then start applying it onto the cloak and we've got to keep an eye on how it's settling here because what we want it to do is to settle in the creases that we've got so for example if I start on here what we want to do is apply it and start moving it around so when it first goes on it'll be quite thick but what we need to do is just keep pushing it around so it starts to run into corners and creases and things so we just need to bring it all the way around here in particular making sure it goes down to this region here now once this is dry what we're going to do is start cleaning things up with some layering so on the raised up areas like i'm around now it doesn't particularly matter how it dries on these parts just as long as it's not too thick and too strong so you can see really what i'm doing is just pushing away the excess and just removing it but where it goes into recessed parts such as up here we do want it settling in those darker areas so just let it settle as it will in parts like that. Now in particular we've got this shadow area down here so we definitely want to make sure it goes into this part so making sure to run it in there making sure it's settling in those creases then bring it up here. Now you'll notice as it's starting to run on the miniature because it's quite a runny paint you can see it is starting to collect towards the bottom of parts, especially in recessed parts. So for example, down here, now you need to keep an eye out for that sort of thing because that can dry as a big blob if you're not careful. So just use a brush to move away the excess and just bring it down more to that sort of level before you move on. But really it's just a case of getting it on like this. Now you can see this technique is best for cloaks where you do have a lot of texture, but in this case, we do have those creases. So some texture there. Just bear in mind if it's very large sweeping movements like this, it's quite easy for it to start running and pooling. So what you can do is just let the model dry by holding it on the flat like this and this way that wash will just collect down in that area there, almost like a trench. So something to bear in mind if you have large cloaks like this. The wash is now completely dry and you can see it's given us that shading in those deeper recesses but on the raised up parts it has gone a bit patchy which is always going to happen when you're applying a wash over a large flat surface like that. So what we need to do is clean that up and at the same time we can start moving towards highlighting. So now the layering comes in and for this we need to return to that original colour that we used for our mid-tone. So in this case that'll be back to Sanguine Scarlet and we can push a little bit further with a brighter red. So here we're going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet. But first of all we're going for Sanguine Scarlet and to apply it I've changed brush now to quite a small 
fine one. I've gone for a size one here from Artsopus. So an equivalent from Citadel, that's about a medium layer, that sort of thing. Medium sized brush with a good point on it is what we need here. And the idea for the layering is that we're gonna build up thin layers on it. So the trick to doing this is to expect to have to do a few layers and to take advantage of that by thinning the paint down so it's a bit translucent. So on your palette, you see, I'm just adding gradually more water into it until the paint starts to become a little bit weak, essentially. We want to bring it down to about this point here, which if I just collect some and start painting it thinly on our palette, you can see how it's a bit translucent as I get to this point here. So it's, as it settles, you can see that palette showing through it. That's what we want to happen on the miniature here so that we can build up coats because when you, well, when that one's dry and you put another one on top, you'll get a stronger finish to it and we can focus that in areas where we want the color to be stronger. So with that prepared then, we can start with the first layer. And with this, we're looking to actually paint the majority of the fabric, just avoiding the deepest recesses. So for example, what we want to do is apply it on this large curve that we've got around here. And you can see it's quite thin, so some of that wash is still showing through, but this is exactly what we want because as we get close to this recess here, what we can do is bring it to the darkest area and then just leave it there. And basically we skip past to where another highlight's gonna be. So this part of the fabric standing out just here, follow that down in this downward sweeping motion. And this way we can start to, well, you can see, clean that up, but we're also retaining the definition we got from that wash. Same is gonna be true just here, where again, it's looking for those raised up parts and being careful not to drop into the corners. Now, because we put it on thinly, you can see it dries fairly quickly, which means we can go back in for that second coat. And this time we just focus it a little bit more. So now, when we get to this raised up curve, we're just not gonna go quite so far down the side, go to about there this time. And this way you can see now, the second coat of red I'm applying is stronger than the original one. So by doing this, what we can start to do is build up that volume there and start to bring out some highlights. So it's just a matter now of doing this all across the cloak, always looking for those recesses and just being careful to avoid them. With that done, you can see the red is now nicely built up and so we can move on to some Evil Sun Scarlet and this is moving more towards highlights now, but it's the same sort of application where the color's been thinned down so it's a little bit translucent and again, we're looking to apply it as thin layers, only now it's more selectively aimed at the parts that are more raised up and standing out. So for example, this fold on the cloak, you can see I'm just gently following it along here, but I'm not dropping into the recess where it gets darker around there. With that done, you can see now we've really built up that volume in the color, and so we can move on to highlighting it. And for this, we're gonna go for two colors, starting out with some demon red, so a nice vibrant red here, and then we can move into an orange to finish it off. And for this, I'm gonna use some orange flare. But first of all, what we need is demon red, and to apply it, I'm going for a really small brush now. I've gone down to a size double zero from Artsopus, so the equivalent of a small layer from Citadel. I like to go for a brush like this just for that focus, because now, essentially, we're picking out the peaks of the creases. So with that paint thinned down, just make sure you've only got a small amount of new brush and a fine point there on the bristles because what we're looking for are things such as these creases around here where we just wanna pick out the very top of them. So for example, just along here, using the tip of the brush, it's gonna skim around that bit there, picking out that crease. And on this side, we want to follow it around here. And then you can see the crease goes down the cloak. So what we wanna do is follow that. And for this, what you do is just do this downward sweeping motion so you get a nice smooth curve on that line just going down there like that. So the same is true for all these parts, such as these ones around here. And in addition, what we need to do is look out for the outer edge of the cloak. In this case, just follow it all the way around as well. So down here, for example, just avoiding the parts that really go into shadow, such as in there. When you're happy with that highlight, you're then ready to move on to some orange flare. This is basically a bright orange for a finer highlight where we want to exaggerate the parts that stand out to make them just pop a little bit more. So for example, we're looking at things such as this crease here, which is quite well defined. So I'm just gonna flick a little bit of this color onto that bit where all those lines come together. Same is gonna be true as we go over the shoulders because these parts stand out nicely too. So we're looking for those highlights we put in previously. So I want to trace over them just these parts where the light's gonna be caught the most. So for example, these lines just going around here. And there we are with the highlights done, you can see the completed cloak. And this method is very much a tried and true one. You can see it's nice and straightforward to do, but there are some key things to remember. The first is when you're putting that wash on, you need to keep an eye on how it's settling to make sure it's staying where you want it to go before you let it completely dry. The next thing is when you're layering it, start to brighten things up. Just remember to thin that paint down so it's a little bit translucent so you can apply it as multiple layers. This way you can get that nice gradient going from dark to light.
The third method we're going to take a look at is one that really revolves around the technique wet blending, which you might have heard of and be under the impression it's quite difficult to do. It's actually much easier to do than you might think. And essentially it's all about just getting two colours on the miniature with both those paints still being wet. Then you pull one of them into the other one to merge them together. And this way what you get is a nice gradient between the two. You can do it for highlighting and shading, but also just between two colours that you might want to mix on a miniature. So it's a great thing to learn. And we're going to use it on the cloak here to generate those smooth shadows and highlights. Now, once again, our example is going to be a storm cast eternal miniature and I've already base coated the cloak this time. I've done it with Berserker Red and we're going to start out by introducing some shading into it, into these recessed parts. So areas such as this little my sort of crease that goes in just down here. And to do it, what we need to do is start out with the colour that we've already base coated the area. So for this example, I already need some Berserker Red. But what we're going to do is introduce a black into it for the shading. So here I'm going to use some Doom Death Black and I'm going to play around with it a little bit by introducing some Cantor Blue into it. Now the reason is because I want the shadow to be a little bit cold, to be a nice contrast against the highlights which are going to be much warmer. And this is certainly something you can play around with on your miniatures to increase that contrast a little bit more. Likewise, if you're going to have warm colours in the shadows, you could go for colder colours in the highlights and things. So again, just sort of get that bit more contrast in things. But what we need to do is set this up. And you can see I've already got my Berserker Red here on the palette, and I've also got some Doom Death Black too. What we're going to do is just introduce just a little bit of Cantor Blue into this black, just to make it into a really, really dark blue. So just a little bit there like that. So we've got a nice dark colour just there. So that's the sort of thing I'm going for. Next thing to do is to make sure both these paints are prepared to be applied. So we just need to add a touch of water to them to thin them down. So just a little bit of water there on the black. And then likewise on the red, we need to do the same thing. So just a little touch of water. Bring that in there so we've got a nice smooth um, well, dilution of it. So there we go, and then we're ready to go. So what I like to do with this is to start out with the colour we've already got on there. So that's going to be Berserker Red, and what we want to do with this is pick the highlight to where it's going to go and then bring it a little bit into where the shadow is going to be. So we're looking at this region around here. Make sure you're nice and comfortable because the motion is going to be a back and forth motion like this. What I want to do is pull the shadow colour into the highlight colour. So we'll add the red on here. So I'm just going to apply it over this region. So just making sure we get a nice broad coverage there like that. And then without even washing the brush, what we're going to do is just grab the shadow colour. So get some of that black then apply it into the deepest recess down here and start applying it. And then this backward and forth motion, what you do is you just pull it up into that red and you can see what it does is mix the colors on the fly and starts to get that gradient. Now, usually the first pass will be a little bit scratchy and a little bit rough. So what you do is just keep working away at it like that, just pulling it up into that other color. And there we go, we've got that gradient on there. Now what we now need to do is let that dry. And once it is dry, you'll probably see just a few lines of the motion that you've just been doing. So what you do is let it dry, then do the exact same thing again over the top. And just like any base coat, what it will do is just provide a smoother finish to it. So let that dry, do the same thing over the top, and you'll have that shading laid in there. And there we are, we've now got that shadow in there. So what we can do is start moving towards brightening things up. So now we're gonna go for Berserker Red once again, but this time blend it into a brighter red. And here I'm gonna use some Sanguine Scarlet. And the process is basically the same thing. We've already got some of that Berserker Red ready, but what we need to do is make sure that we've got the Sanguine Scarlet ready. So I can just thin it down and make sure we've got a good little area to draw from. So there we go. And what I'm going to do with this one is start out with that Sanguine Scarlet and this I'm going to be applying onto this part of the fabric just here. Now again I want to make sure I'm nice and comfortable for that back and forth motion. So I'm going to start by applying this in this region, again just making sure we get a good amount of it evenly applied across this part just here. And then whilst it's still wet, we're then ready to grab that darker red. So Berserker Red, let's get some of that without even washing the brush. Apply that into this area where we've got that Berserker Red colour and then again just pull it back and forth into the brighter colour so we get a nice blend between the two. When you're happy with that brighter red, it's then time to move into our highlights. And for the first one, what we're going to do is a little bit of blending once again, this time using Demon Red and bringing it into that Sanguine Scarlet. But at the same time, we can use Demon Red for a bit of a sharper highlight too. But again, what we need to do is get them ready. And we've still got some Sanguine Scarlet ready on the palette. So now it's time to just get some of that Demon Red thinned as well. So a nice bright red, this one. And with it, we're now looking for the parts where the light is going to catch. So first of all, let's make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we can start with blending this. And here we're looking at areas such as this part along here. So what we want to do is again, just introduce the brighter color into where we want our highlight to be coming down. So we'll look at this region just going down there. And then it's a matter of grabbing the other color. And just whilst that paint is wet, just blending the two of them together. So we're looking at going down here this time, just bringing those two together along there. 
again with that sort of back and forth motion. So I'm just going to add a bit more around there, go back and forth and bring the two colors together. Now, in addition, we can use it for that sharper highlight. And in this case, it's looking for the creases that are standing out really. So for example, around here, what we want to do is just introduce it on the sharpest part, such as around here. And with that, the blending for the highlights is now complete. And so what we can now do is just move on to a sharp highlight to finish it off. And for this, in the case of red, what we now want to go for is an orange, so a nice warm color now. I'm going to use some orange flare once more. And to apply it, I've gone for a really small brush now. I've gone down to my size double zero because with this color, we just want to look for the sharpest creases and just to add this color to those parts, just really make it pop, you know, just to finish it off. So you need a small amount of it. And when you're ready, we're now looking for the parts that stand out. So for example, on these curves of the cloak, we're looking at areas just around here where we just want to apply it as just a quick edge highlight, just skimming around that part there just to help that stand out. And when we get to the creases further up where it's a little bit sharp around here, again, we're looking for these angles and edges that stand out. We just want to gently follow along each one. And here we have the completed blended cloak. And as you see, doing it this way means you get a nice control gradient on those colors. And doing this is actually really fun and it is much easier to do than it might first appear. But it does take a little bit of practice to get your head around it. But if you've never tried it before, I definitely encourage you to give it a go because it's really fun and it looks great. So there you have it, three fantastic ways of painting cloaks on your miniatures. And now if you excuse me, I've had quite enough heroics one day, so I think it's time to take off the spreadsheet. Ha 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 ha! Ouch. <laughs>